In this video, we have a series of disturbances. They're going to be moving in over the next several days, bringing multiple rounds of severe weather and even snow for some as May starts off very active. Good morning, everyone. How's it going out there? This is your Sunday, May the 1st update. Man, we got a lot to get to this morning. So let's start off with the overall SBC update. This is the latest update from the Storm Prediction Center. They went ahead and, in fact, enhanced the risk and expanded the risk at the 8 a.m. advisory for portions of West Texas. We're along the dry line today. Thunderstorms are expected to explode right around 5 or 6 o'clock in the afternoon. But we do have an enhanced risk in place into West Texas as, part, as much as uh, Central Texas. And then even a slight risk will extend all the way into portions of towards the DFW Metroplex. And then along this cold front here that came in yesterday, we are going to have a marginal risk for storms later on this afternoon for portions of the deep south. And then a little bit a little elevated threat for a slight risk for severe weather in the portions of North Carolina and Virginia. So if we break this down, the main threat today is going to be that very large hail. So a lot of the, the a lot of the updrafts are pretty good, going to be really intense in this neck of the woods. So the Storm Prediction Center does, in fact, highlight a hatched risk that typically implies that golf ball size hell or greater. And within this red shaded area, that's a 30% chance of seeing some of those golf ball size hail potential or greater. That basically means 70% of you won't see hail at all. So it's not a widespread threat. These are going to be isolated supercells. They're going to be popping up along the dry line in the heat of the afternoon. They're going to be pushing across to the east into the evening hours, into the overnight hours, weakening as they push towards uh, central Texas and to north Texas. But we do have, along where that marginal risk is in place, a little bit of an elevated threat for pocket, ch pocket change hail. And some of those could be mixed into some quarter size variety. So that's why they do have that you know, 5% chance for uh, large hail up here and then if we move through the tornado threat they do in fact have that tornado threat about a five percent chance of an isolated tornado threat so you could be seeing a few tornadoes along that boundary here into west texas as we go into the heat of the afternoon into the overnight hour so definitely don't let your guard down but the main threat within this area is going to be your very large hail and then you have your damaging winds and you have your isolated uh tornado threat so as we move through to tomorrow, there's just another, an enhanced risk for severe weather going into Monday. Now that transfers into portions of Oklahoma, going into southern parts of Kansas here. The slight risk for severe weather extends all the way into portions of Missouri, extends portions and in, back into portions to say Wichita Falls area. And you do have a marginal risk extended into central Texas that'll swing all the way over into portions of western uh, Tennessee. So let's kind of break this down for today on the latest uh, high resolution guidance. This is the dew point. So if you're waking up this morning into portions of Oklahoma and uh, North Texas here, you got your dew point sitting about 48 degrees. So that's you're on the other side of that cold front. So it feels very nice. It's a nice day out there, guys. So enjoy it while you last because all that soupy air is down to the south and we've got a warm front that's going to be backing up during the daytime hours today. So let's kind of move this in motion here and you can see where the where the dew points are. This is kind of your level of moisture in the atmosphere. So the dry line is obviously very active out here into uh, West Texas and, uh, and portions of New Mexico. Very dry out here. A lot of critical higher fire dangers out here in this neck of the woods has just been bone dry and very windy uh, lately as well but you can see as we go through the afternoon hours this is about two o'clock into uh, your sunday afternoon there's the 67 degree dew points typically need about 55 degrees so to start tapping in to start moistening those layers of the atmosphere and that's going to change as we go through the, e the evening hours and as that warm front backs up that could spark some thunderstorm development down to the southwest regions into the uh, towards uh, the metroplex and into the heat of the afternoon uh, as the dew points start to rise you can see down here about about 70 degrees down here southwest of the metroplex so we could be looking at 20 to 30 percent some isolated supercells starting to bubble up in the heat of the afternoon but i do feel the main activity is not going to get going until about six seven o'clock tonight 
along the dry line along where this sector is where they do have the enhanced risk for severe weather in place this afternoon i think thunderstorms are going to be exploding as they tap into that low level jet a lot of moisture is going to be into the atmosphere a lot of lift in the atmosphere a lot of the instability so i think i feel like supercell thunderstorms are going to be exploding into the heat of the afternoon and as they push across towards central texas into north texas they are going to be weakening as we get towards your uh, into the overnight hours but you can see the dew points uh the very subtle because it doesn't really go anywhere we got widespread 60s uh, up, upwards to 70 degrees and then as we go into tomorrow there's that threat going into portions of kansas into the oklahoma area you see the dry line right around that triple point again we could be looking at kind of a deja vu type setup in a lot of the same areas into southern uh, Kansas. This time, I think it does, in fact, include the Oklahoma City area where they really won't have a cap in place this time. So I think thunderstorms are going to be able to explode in this neck of the woods coming up on the afternoon hours on Monday with the dew points well into the upper 60s. And that will be uh, for your enhanced risk as we get into your afternoon hours. Then as we push through Tuesday, there's, there's that cold front, right? We have another cold front, and that's why they do have that slight risk uh, for a severe weather. But that doesn't push off until further off into, into the east. So now let's take a look at the overall setup on the supercell composite index. So this kind of gives you an idea of where the supercells may fire uh, as we get through the afternoon hours. So as that warm front starts to back up and go from uh, central, go from South Texas into Central Texas, I do feel supercells are going to be starting to kind of explode right here. There's only about a 20 or 30 percent chance. But anything that does form in this area will be supportive of a very large hail, some damaging winds, and you can't roll out an isolated tornado threat up here as along that boundary as the warm front lifts up through, through uh, North Texas. But as we get into the afternoon hours, 7, 8 o'clock in into the afternoon to the early evening hours, there's the supercell composite really starting to explode along the dry line. So I think this is when the time frame is going to start getting really active out here into uh, West Texas. And as we go into the evening hours, you see it's pretty highlighted here down here in the Permian Basin. That's where we could be looking at a little bit of elevated tornado threat as well. And some of those could be very large hail producers out here. I'm expecting some of the biggest hail. Yeah, upwards to three inches in diameter is not out of the question. You could even have some isolated reports tonight maybe even softball size hail out of here uh we saw some of that in say enterprise kansas just the other night i think this has the same type of potential as uh, as cloud tops will start to reach at least some of them could be in the form of fifty thousand foot range and that would be supportive of some very large hail uh out here into the early evening hours but as we go into the overnight hours yes the, the storms do fire off the dry line that that will push into central texas we kind of you know kind of a pocket of a pocket of energy that may move across uh into north texas into the overnight hours on on a much weakened state uh probably not nearly as severe as what you're going to be seeing into into uh, west texas this afternoon but as we go through the uh morning hours of monday and then going into your monday afternoon there's the supercell composite index really starting to explode up here into southern Kansas and to Oklahoma, where I feel numerous uh, storms are going to be exploding with very large hail, your damaging winds. And yes, that tornado threat is going to be coming back up here into Kansas, into Oklahoma, into the afternoon hours. And yeah, it could be a bumpy ride as we get into your evening time frame into the Oklahoma area, Oklahoma City area right along that boundary there where that cold front will continue to slide through into your into your Tuesday morning. So now let's take a look at the overall setup on the uh, on the tornado parameter index. So let's kind of walk you through time kind of the same scenario. It, along, you know, if we got some supercells, we're probably going to have some isolated tornado threat. So as we move through time and go through about that six, seven o'clock time frame, yeah, we start to look at some elevated numbers out here into uh, West Texas. There's that pocket of energy along that warm front southwest of the Metroplex could spark an isolated tornado or two down there. I'll probably be going live with this event about five or six o'clock through the evening hours to keep you well ahead of these storms that I that I feel are going to be exploding 
uh, along the dry line here. And as we go deeper to the evening hours, that storms are going to be pretty prevalent. The tornado threat still can, remains high uh, as we go into the evening hours, but weakening as it goes towards North Texas into the morning hours. But as we get into tomorrow afternoon, those parameters just start to elevate again, right there again. Let's stop the clock about four or five o'clock. We're hitting numbers maxing out about 15. So that's definitely elevated up here into Southern Kansas and to portions of Oklahoma here as we get into that four or five o'clock timeframe. And as we get six, there are seven. Yeah, those numbers really start to explode. So it's definitely gonna be a bumpy evening into Southern Kansas and to Oklahoma. Uh, with some higher tornado potential. So definitely be on high alert up here into Kansas and Oklahoma as we get into that five they t through 10, 11 o'clock timeframe. So that's kind of your bullseye as with the cold front uh, pushing through, that'll wind down the tornado threat as we get deeper into the overnight hours into Tuesday uh, morning. But now let's take a look at some of the updrafts. And this is kind of gives you an idea of where some of the higher updrafts could be. So yeah, it kind of sparks right here, southwest of the Metroplex of Dallas into uh, West Texas. There's another swath up here in Kansas, up here into Southern Kansas here is much of uh, Oklahoma. So yeah, this kind of gives you an idea of where some of the most significant updrafts could be over the next uh, 48 uh, to 60 hours or so. But now let's take a look at the overall composite reflectivity a radar depiction so this is where we are right now this morning and so as that warm front starts to bubble up right so as it starts getting active the dew points start to rise as they go back into the you know low 60s 65s we'll stop the clock we'll start to see these little isolated bubblers any of these any these little supercell thunderstorms that do start to explode by three four or five o'clock could be severe so they would could turn severe Within about 20 minutes or so, it's not going to take much in this type of atmosphere because I'm not really expecting a cap in place out here. So there's not going to be really anything to stop these things from forming once they do. And as we get deeper into that five o'clock hour, I, I'm, I'm expecting numerous supercell thunderstorms. There's that setup southwest of the Metroplex that I feel we could be looking at an isolated tornado threat. Some of these could be golf ball size hail variety or bigger. And out here in West Texas, yeah, tennis ball, baseball, some of these isolated reports of softball size hail can't be rolled out of the panhandle of Texas into the Permian Basin here, back here in Odessa, into Midland. Uh, back here at far west Texas. But as we move through time into the evening hours, uh, this will just continue to push across and to the east. So this kind of gives you an idea, you know, depending on where this setup, this could fall, this could easily fall into central Texas. This could easily go over into uh, north Texas. This just kind of gives you an idea. Uh, we have a northern branch that breaks off into Oklahoma, and we have a southern branch that's going to break off somewhere into central Texas and into north Texas into the evening hours. This is your midnight time frame. So into the overnight hours, it could be pretty uh, windy uh, into north and central Texas into the deep into the overnight hours. But yeah, there's you got some more rain moving into that Oklahoma time frame four o'clock in the morning on Monday through Oklahoma, through Kansas, all the way through Nebraska, and then northwest of the surface low. Yeah, that's snow, guys. <laughs> that's some heavier snow falling into portions of the Rocky Mountains here. I know it's May, but it's still snowing out there because it's still pretty cold some in, pla in places. But as we move through time, through the eight o'clock timeframes, this, this gives you an idea of where these storms uh, could be. But as again, as we go into the heat of the afternoon, into your you know four five six o'clock time frame we start to see those isolated bubblers again start to explode and i feel like that's where the tornado threat is going to be coming back that's where the very large hail is going to be coming back for portions of kansas that'll get into portions of oklahoma here and this will move across and then another swath could go through along the cold front into the oklahoma area as we get into your monday evening and that will pin well southeast into the overnight hours on tuesday morning so yeah it's very active as this continues to push across into arkansas as you wake up on your tuesday uh, morning time frames but there's your overall wind swath over the next say 48 hours into uh, and around the southern plains here maxing out about 84 84 miles an hour so some of these some of these uh, you know supercells that do try to explode they are going to be pretty good wind producers as this will push across it could be forming some bow segments out there 
So yeah, some 70, 80 mile per hour wind gusts is not out of the question and some isolated pockets, but yeah, it's gonna be pretty windy over the next uh, you know, 48 hours or so in the Southern Plains with those two disturbances, they're gonna be moving in. But as we get into your Tuesday timeframe, there's the Storm Prediction Center already highlighting a marginal risk for severe storms along that cold front there into Arkansas, into Western Tennessee, back into the Ohio Valley again, with a pocket of a slight risk for severe weather uh, going into your Tuesday timeframe into portions of Kentucky here, and as well as uh, Western Tennessee uh, with the storm threat along that uh, cold front there. Then as we move into your Wednesday time frame, yet we have another disturbance that's already moving in. This is a day four risk. So when you see an enhanced risk already for day four, that means there's these storms could be pretty strong as we get during the daytime hours on Wednesday. So yeah, I'm expecting this particular risk, even on Wednesday, to expand and even get a little bit higher as we get closer in time. But right now, there's the bullseye again into portions of North Texas, into Oklahoma, into uh, southern uh, Kansas. And then again, that disturbance will just pinwheel move across through on uh, you know your Thursday time frame, May the 5th. Now I'll be pushing out of Dallas, heading back into Arkansas by then, into uh, southeast Missouri. But let's take a look at the expand the view for the rest of the United States and portions of Canada here. This is your this is your temperature. So over the next uh, four days or so, so you can see the graph on the bottom of the screen and you can kind of follow along. Mainly our southern states, that's where the warm sector will be. But the, we have a series of cold fronts. It's going to be moving moving across. That's going to kick off those disturbances as they move across as cold fronts and then they kind of back up as warm fronts. But it's still going to be cooler in our northern northern tier, at least for the next uh, couple couple of days here, as we see that cold front will be sliding through on Tuesday through portions of the, the you know the south central states. But it doesn't last long; it rapidly rebounds and kind of warms back up again. But this will got kind of give you an idea of where the temperatures will be, depending on where you live in the U.S. With mainly the cooler conditions for much of the Northwest and our Northern northern tier, and even the Northeast is still gonna be fairly uh, cool considering uh, for, for May uh, standards. But now let's take a look at the latest NAM. So this is kind of gives you an idea of the, of the rest of you where the precipitation could fly. And the blue is, yeah, your snow. So you got some snow today into portions of uh, Southern Canada, Canada there. As these systems will be moving across, it's going to be cold enough as we have another storm system moving in off the Pacific Northwest. It's going to be cold enough to snow into, into Monday, going into Wyoming, back into the Rockies. That could pinwheel across to in portions of Nebraska there with snow. And we have another disturbance that's moving in, tapping into some of that cold air in the higher elevations of Idaho on Monday. And then, of course, it's still going to be snowing in parts of, uh, of uh, portions of Canada there. But that disturbance will be moving across through Wednesday through uh, portions of Wyoming. And it'll kind of wind itself down as it gets towards uh, the Rocky Mountains into your Wednesday uh, afternoon. But here's an idea of where the where the precipitation is going to be and how much over the next uh, through your work week. So you, so you can plan ahead. So out here in the Pacific Northwest, you can see the graph at the bottom left hand corner of the screen, anywhere from, say, uh, you know, a half inch to upwards to one to two inches and in isolated pockets. Here's the bullseye with the series of disturbances are going to be moving across the plains and our central states with a good two to four inches uh, up here in these these red shaded areas. And then they will kind of weaken as they move across through the Ohio Valley. And then once you get up to, to the northeast here, this is over the next four or five days, quarter to a half inch up here. And back here down to the southeast, again, about a quarter uh, to a half inch is kind of expected. So here's some of the temperature anomalies on the, on the latest uh, European. So this kind of gives you a depiction on your, you know, your temperature anomalies over the next uh, seven days. Uh, what you would typically see this time of year. So as we start today, you all you see the warm sector down there, down below. Uh, but there's that cool pocket that's going to be coming in in the portions of the upper Great Lakes here with a good swath of 10 to 15 degrees below average temperatures, and that will pinwheel through. And there's where it's going to be cold enough to snow with a pocket of 25 degrees below average in parts of the Rockies into Nebraska here through north northeast 
uh, northwest Kansas here can't be ruled out with a good 20 to 25 degrees below average temperatures. So that's why you actually are able to see some snow on the map up there. But there's the cold front sliding through on Tuesday uh, with you know 10 to 15 degrees below average. But mainly the southern states are going to be remaining in the above average temperatures for much of the work week. But as we get into later in the week, into your Thursday, Friday time frame, we've got a pretty significant ridge that's gonna be starting to build in out here in portions of the, the Pacific Northwest. We see well above average temperatures moving in with the trough gonna be developing in the midsection of the country. But underneath that, that's where all the cooler conditions are gonna be with the ridge on the backside. So that's well above average temperatures extending all the way into portions of Montana going into Canada by the time we get into Friday as that trough will be moving across uh, from, from west to east, bringing those below average temperatures back into uh, places into Illinois, back into the Ohio Valley, getting into parts of the mid-Atlantic states as we get into your Saturday. So, hey, I appreciate you guys uh, watching. Do like this video and definitely leave your comments below. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel to catch the latest update where I protect you before and after the storm.